Jesus. Sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus. I love you more and more. Jesus saves and he keeps me. He's the one that I adore every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. Praise the Lord. I love him more and more. Jesus saves and he keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Every day I will Jesus. Come on, sing it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every day with Jesus. With my Jesus. Hallelujah. It's sweeter than the day before. Every day with my Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. I love him more and more. Jesus saves and he keeps me. He's the one that I adore. Come on. Every day with Jesus. Sweeter than the day before. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. I love y'all. Now, y'all know that mean I'm getting ready to fuss about something, huh? I love y'all. We got people that want to come to church, but they can't find a park. Because Church of Apostolicity people won't obey their pastor and move their cars down the street. Why is that so hard, y'all? 
Y'all don't, y'all don't want the church to grow. That's the problem. I, I, that's, that's the problem, Elder Whitfield. They don't want church to grow. Put your car down the street. Why is that so hard? That is not complicated. Amen. And maybe, uh, Jeremiah, take my car. Put my truck down there. Maybe if I put mine down there, y'all don't get a pat. No, no, you, you sing it. I'm on, I ain't fussing. I'm smiling. It's in my hat behind the door. Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Come on, y'all. Every day with Jesus. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Let us all stand. After we pray, if y'all want to be obedient, go move your car. If you don't want to be obedient, you stay right in your seat. Amen. Just, it's just that easy. Because I'm not, I'm not going to announce it no more. I'm going I'm to just pray and say, God, all of those that don't want to obey, slap them upside the head. Amen. And God know how to do it. So I'm telling y'all, I'm going to pray on you. Now, I've been nice. I'm going to pray on you. I'm telling you, that's what I'm going to say, Lord. Just get them. Because they, they, y'all causing problems. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. You're so good, you're so good, you're so good, you're so good. You're good, and we appreciate you. We love you, Lord. We can't do nothing without you, Jesus. We can't do nothing without you. We are here this morning because you woke us up in our right mind. We are here this morning because you, 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 you loved us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. We are here, Lord God, because you love us. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We just bless your name. We thank you for this past revival week, Lord God. We thank you for revitalizing. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for reminding us. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And we thank you for this day. Because this is the day. Hallelujah. This is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. So we thank you for bringing us to another, another, another moment in time when we can worship you, where we can praise you. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the service on today. We thank you for every praise and every worship, every scripture, hallelujah, every heart that's here today, Lord God, to give you the glory. We thank you, Father, because without you, we can't do nothing. Hallelujah. Bless everyone as they continue on in their duties today. Lord God, bless the speaker, Father. Hallelujah. Take away the nerve and strengthen her body right now, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We love you and we praise you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Every day with Jesus. We got the men's choir here. They're going to come and they're going to praise God. Amen. Amen. We got tenors, baritones, and bass. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to have a good day today. Amen. We ain't having a good day because it's Mother Day. Matthew chapter 5. We're having a good day because what God been doing for us all week. Amen. If y'all was here... If y'all was here all week, hallelujah. If y'all was here all week, if y'all was here all week, then y'all know why we are excited about serving Jesus. Somebody got the Holy Ghost. Two people got baptized. Amen. God reminded us our job. God is good. Come on, Matthew chapter 5. Let's read verse 3 through 7. Anybody got it? Amen. Read. Blessed are the for theirs is the blessed are they that mourn for they shall be blessed are the for they shall in blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be blessed are the for they shall 
and I present to you the men's choir. Amen. Amen. Greet them with a holly. Praise the Lord. Wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are, so glad I know him, oh yes I do. Wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are. Yes, I do. Wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley. That's who you are, so glad I know him, oh yes I do, wonderful Jesus, thou art so true, wonderful Jesus. Bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are. So glad I know him, oh yes I do. Wonderful Jesus. Thou art so true, wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are, so glad I know. Yes, I do. Wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley. That's who you are, so glad I know him, oh yes I do, wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Everything God is my everything, He's my joy in sorrow, He's my hope for tomorrow, He 
He's my rock in a weary land, my shelter in the time of storm. God is, God is my everything. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy in sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock in a weary land, my shelter in the time of storm. God is, God is my everything. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy in sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my rock in a weary land. My shelter in the time of storm. God is, God is, God is, God is. God is, God is, God is, God is, God is my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. My everything, my everything, my everything, my everything, God is, God is my everything. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is. Brother Josh, I know I. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you say? Aren't you glad you saved? Hallelujah. Amen. I know I am. We had a person to get baptized. We had another person to get baptized. And then we had a person to get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And the, and the thing about it, they're not adults, they're babies. Amen. Listen, listen, Hallelujah. listen. Do y'all know, do y'all know this church pretty much all of the adults got the Holy Ghost in here? That's Amen. a member. Do y'all know that? Thank you. So y'all can, we should be able to understand that when the, when the preacher was talking about we got apostolic power. Amen. And we're not using it. Something, we're doing something wrong. We got to fix that, y'all. We got to fix that. Can you imagine all, all of us? And listen, all of the children, I think except one, has got the Holy Ghost down to the age of seven. I think except one, maybe two, in case I'm miscounting. That, that's a wonderful thing, y'all. We, listen, we, we should be able to turn this world, we should be able to turn this street, this corner, this city upside down. Come on, come on. Sister Asa. Gion. 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 Beverly. I've 
been knowing you all your life. I didn't know that was your middle name. You never told me that was your middle name. How, you, how do you pronounce it? Gian. Gian. I'm going to start calling you Gian now. Sister Gian. You got baptized, honey. Do you still feel clean? Come on, you got to talk to me. You can't shake your head. All right. You still feel clean? Man, she came to me. She said, Pastor, I feel so clean. <laughs> you, let me, do we remember that feeling? It just feels so clean. Like, like everything is gone. All right, we got to get a drum roll on this one. Sister Nicole Israel Cologne. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I've been, I've been knowing you all your life, and I didn't know your middle name was Ariel. Am I pronouncing it right? Ariel. Okay, Ariel. All right. Nicole, y'all know. Y'all know Nicole been tearing hard for the Holy Ghost a long time. Hallelujah. A long time. Amen. She told me before, I don't know, what last year, year before last, some point, she said, Pastor, when I get the Holy Ghost, I already know what I want to do in the church. Amen. And listen, we got, we got babies already got plans. Just give me the Holy Ghost, Lord, and I'm going to work. Listen, I think that's great. God is putting something in them that's going to take them all their life. And y'all got to remember, y'all, when it comes to baptism, y'all twins. Y'all know that, right? Y'all got baptized the same. Who's your prayer partner? Sister Celia. What's Sister Celia at? Wave your hand. All right. Who's your prayer partner, Ace? Who? Aaron? All right. Has Aaron been baptized yet? But that's your prayer partner. You got to convince her now. You got to tell her that how, how important it is. Amen. All right. Encourage. Amen. Baptismal certificate. Said this certifies in obedience to the command and in the following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Asa Jack. Gian, <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Gian Beverly or Sister Nicole Ariel Cologne was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of her sin on the 12th day of May 2017 at Church of Apostolicity, the Apostolic Doctrine. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, y'all been here all y'all life. So y'all know how important those certificates are, right? Y'all know that. So y'all go home, say, Mom, Dad, I want a, I want a good, I want a good friend. Amen. Don't get you, don't go to the 99 cent store. What, what that, what that store? Some brothers into the Aaron brothers. Go to Aaron brothers where they got some. You hear me? And if they say we ain't got that money, say Pastor said it. All right. Nicole. The Holy Ghost certificate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Nicole Ariel Colon, following the examples of the apostles on the day of Pentecost, were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues on the 12th day of May 2017 at the Church of Apostolicity, the Apostolic Doctrine. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all excited? I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited. That listen. Listen. That's that's huh? What'd you say? No, wait a minute. Say that loud. I'm so proud of you, Nicole. Oh, get that picture there. Let me get out of that one. Y'all gonna y'all gonna make me start crying up here. Come on, let's take this is a picture that all of y'all, listen, y'all like to spread a whole lot of stuff about police beating up folks and folks fighting and jokes. See, this is something everybody should spread over the internet. And we got babies, babies getting the Holy Ghost. Amen. And listen, 
Church of Apostolicity got a reputation. You got to live holy. So they know we ain't lying. They know if we say you got the Holy Ghost over here, you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you got baptized over here, you got baptized in whose name? Jesus. Whose name? Jesus. Come on, shout hallelujah. 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 Now, you got books. You know about these books too, right? That's your new life. And uh, starting next, next um, Sunday, I want you to go to the new converse. Okay? You've been around. You, you, you're not a, I mean, you may be a novice in knowledge, but you're not a novice in knowing what's supposed to be done. So you can keep up with, with Elder Whitfield and Sister Angela, okay? All right, I want you sitting in the new converse class. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come here, give me a hug. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, here, this is yours. I'm proud of both of y'all. Amen. Yeah. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Come on. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Do, do y'all know, are we in a hurry to go home today? Can I talk a little bit? I'm not preaching. I just want to praise God for a minute. I heard, I heard, I heard people saying, I ain't never heard so-and-so speak in tongue. But when they was speaking in tongue on Friday night, y'all heard folk that y'all didn't believe had the Holy Ghost, didn't you? They had the Holy Ghost, but they, they, let, it, they let it go dormant. They, they done something and went dormant. But when God got through yeah, with us yeah. on Friday night. And now here's the thing. I saw some of y'all sitting still like a knot, literally like a knot on a log. Now you help me. You help me to understand how you can sit here like this. This is, this is what they were doing. I've been around God a long time. Somebody, well, that's the way I praise God. You a bald faced lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. And, and you make me want to say, and God ain't in you. Because for you to do that, for you to do that, and the Holy Ghost was moving that strong, something ain't right. Now, I like, I like to believe you're so deep in sin. But that, listen, that was a time God could have snatched you. Hallelujah. El, Elder Whitfield going to come to me. I told him something he was supposed to be doing. Well, Pastor, I was praising the Lord too. I said, that don't stop you from doing your job. You can still pray. Listen, I was praising the Lord, but I was doing my job. I was watching all of y'all. My job is to watch over y'all no matter what y'all do. But I was, wasn't I stomping? Jumping up? But I was still looking at those that wasn't moving. I don't ever stop doing my job. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying? Listen, the sister preached. We got to know our assignment. Do your job, but you, listen, God going to keep adding stuff to you. You just keep doing that and do that and do that and do that. But in the midst, shout hallelujah. In the midst of ma making CD, hallelujah. In the midst of ushering folk, shout hallelujah. In the midst of being drunk, what you going to do? Shout hallelujah. His brother be shouting hallelujah beaten. <laughs> hallelujah. Listen, listen. Tell me God is a wonderful. Why would anybody? I've been thinking all week. Y'all know what I've been saying all week? I said, Lord, I say, anybody that finds fault with this church, something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Listen. I don't merchandise you. I ain't flirting with no women. I mean, I, I, I don't know what, I'm, what all I'm doing wrong is telling you to live holy. And something wrong with me? You mean tell me you like sin? I thought that's why we came over here to get out of it. But y'all want me to preach. Some of y'all want me to preach y'all back into it. You're in the wrong church. I'm here. To, I got a hook. You know, y'all sheep. You know, the, 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 the sheep, the, 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 the shepherds had a, a stick. With a hook on it. I'm a shepherd. I'm using that hook to snatch you. 
And when you don't, when you don't listen, I'm going to snatch you by your neck. Amen. I ain't going to never break it. You're going to think I broke it sometime. <laughs> but I ain't going to never break it. Listen, because we like to wonder. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to let you wonder. What am I saying? What am I saying? Listen, we had a wonderful time this week. And I can't do nothing but thank God. I can't do nothing but praise God. Hallelujah. And the wonderful thing about it, I, I think it was Sister Tony or somebody said, but they, she passed, they said, she passed, she's saying the same thing you say. I said, but I know that, but here's the good part about me. I get to hear it without saying it. Right. Amen. Right. Oh, hallelujah. I know y'all ain't the pastor, so y'all don't get it. I get to hear it, Papa David, without saying it. That's a wonderful thing for a pastor. Like, man, she said, she's saying the same thing I say. I mean, it must be some Holy Ghost somewhere. Wow. Listen, pastor, listen, we need encouragement of confirmation, affirmation, agreement, just like y'all do. You know, and not that we doubt God, but ain't nothing like getting out of the mouth of Tua. Make me feel God. Good. So y'all know that means starting next week, I'm going to preach a little harder, huh? All right, come on, let's take offering, amen? Come on, let's take offering. You need an envelope, wave your hand, amen? You know your obligation, you know you got to pay your tithes, you got to give your offering, building fund and all that stuff, amen? But more than anything, you just got to obey the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. God is good. God is great. God is, God is great and greatly God is great in my soul. There are many trials on every hand. Trials we cannot understand. But the Lord has given us to know that God is great in my soul. There are many. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There are many. Try on every hand Tries we cannot understand Some of you just don't understand it Let everybody stand The Lord has given us to know that Come on, everybody stand great in my soul God is great, hallelujah God is great oh, He's great and to be praised God is great in my soul, hallelujah. God is great, oh, he's great in to be prayed. I know that God is great in my soul. Come on, God is great, hallelujah. God is great, oh, he's great in to be prayed. I know that God is great in my soul, hallelujah. God is great, oh, he's great in to be great. I know that God is great in my soul. There are many, many, many. There are many tribes on every land. We just can't understand them. But we got to know, hallelujah. But the Lord has given us to know that God is great in my soul. I know that God, God is great. Oh, he's great in to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great. Oh, he's great in to be praised. God is great in my soul. There are many, there are many tribes on every, every hand, tribes we cannot understand. But the Lord has given us to know that God is great in my soul. There are many, there are many, there are many. Child on every hand, child we cannot understand. Yes, yes, yes. But the Lord has given us to 
just to know that God is great in my soul. Come on, shout hallelujah. God is great. God is great. He's great there to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great. Uh, he's great there to be praised. I know that. God is great. I know that. God is great. I know that. God, I know that. God. God is great in my soul. Hallelujah. That, that was that was my contribution to the brotherhood. Amen. Choir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. Hey, he's attacking every day. Hallelujah. But I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means war. This means this means war. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail, but I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. I got joy in my soul. Yeah. God is in control. Amen. I got Satan Amen. on my trail. Hallelujah. But I'm singing all is well. Yeah. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means war. This means this means war. I plead the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. This means war. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. I've been in the storm and the rain, yeah. but the blood still stays the same. Amen. Whatever's going wrong, my world clothes are on. I might be in the days. But you can't have my praise. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. Been the storm and the rain, hallelujah. But the blood still stays the same. Yeah. Whatever's going wrong, my world clothes are on. Yeah. I might be in the days, but you can't have my praise. Yeah, my no matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. This 
This means this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. I plead the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead. I plead the blood. This means war. This means. This means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. Come on, Yankee. You can't have my family. No. You can't have my increase. No. Hallelujah. You can't have my breakthrough. No. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't, you can't, you can't, I plead. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. This means war. This means war. This means war. This means war. You can't have my family. No. You can't have my increase. No. You can't have my breakthrough. No. You can't have my. You can't have my. You can't, you can't, you can't, I plead. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's power in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. There's healing in the blood. I plead, I plead the blood. This means, this means war. This means, this means war. This means this means war. This means this means war. Hallelujah! Oh, Hallelujah! We are the war, y'all. We are the war, y'all. Hallelujah! We are the war, y'all. Come on, shout Hallelujah! But I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Yeah. I plead, I plead the blood. Yeah. All you gotta do is plead the blood. You plead the blood, the devil can't do nothing. I just plead the blood and watch the devil run. Come on. I plead. Come on, there's power in the blood. There's healing in the blood. There's hope in the blood. Yeah, yeah. There's joy in the blood. Yes, yes. I plead. You gotta plead. Put the blood on the devil. Yeah. I, I, I plead the blood. There's joy. There's joy in the blood. There's hope in the blood. There's a healing. Woo! There's a healing in the blood. There's healing in the blood of Jesus. But you got to you got to put the blood on him. Ah! What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Yeah! I plead. Yeah! I plead. Why? Why? Because this means war. Why are you doing it? Because it means war. Because it means what? What? Wait a minute. It means what? What does it mean? It means war. Just 
This means what? This means war! We're in a war, y'all. We're in a war. We're in a war. See, too many people don't realize we're in a war. That's why they keep losing. Listen, you in a war, you got to fight. You got to fight every day. Hallelujah. You came in. He said, don't get weary. Don't get tired. Hallelujah. You wrestle against some, some, some. Listen, we fight some spiritual stuff. We fight some spiritual stuff. And guess what? You can't even see your enemy. But guess what? He's there. He's right there all the time. We're in a war, y'all. If you know you're in a war, wave your hands. If you know you're in a war, shout hallelujah. If you know we're already victorious, shout hallelujah. But you got to show up. You don't know you don't whoop the enemy until you show up. See, y'all don't want to show up and think y'all whooped him. How do you know? You didn't show up to sin. You got, oh, hallelujah. What I mean by show up, you got to live right. When you live right, you don't whoop the enemy. Because you can praise God freely like we're doing right now. You can clap your hand. You can stomp your feet. And you can shout hallelujah. You can shout hallelujah. You can shout hallelujah. Why? Because this is a victory. We already got the Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'm going to get out the way. I'm going to get out the way. But this means war. We're in a war, y'all. We're in a war. But the battle, the battle ain't ours. The battles belong to the Lord. But we got to show up. Every time, every time they won a battle in the Old Testament, they showed up, but God did the fighting. Every time, every time they showed up, God did the fighting. God didn't fight them until they showed up. God ain't going to whoop the devil until you show up and face him. God ain't going to help you out until you show up and face him. God ain't going to get you out of a test until you step into it. God ain't going to get you out of a trial until you step into it. In other words, you got to go to war to, to find out you've already won the war. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're in a war, y'all. I like the part we're in it, but we ain't doing the fighting. Jesus said, the battle is mine. Listen, can we show up? Can we at least show up? If, oh, hallelujah. All right, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. We got another evangelist that's going to come to us this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. She's baptized in Jesus' name. She's filled with the Holy Ghost. She's saved to the bone. She married a saved man. She ain't drinking no more. She ain't no whore no more. She ain't getting high no more. She ain't dancing in the club no more. She ain't lying no more. She ain't stealing no more. She's praising God. Hallelujah. Let us shout hallelujah for our evangelist, First Lady, Alisa Lynette Porter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, hallelujah, where would I be? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. He is so good. He is worthy, worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. 
Hallelujah. It's been a wonderful week. The revival, the revivalists that have come in and spoke to us, they have given us word of wisdom from God. Amen. All we need to do is take heed. Take heed. Amen. Amen. So my question is, are you ready to walk this apostolic walk? <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready to walk this apostolic walk? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to look at the book of Matthews. And let's go to Matthews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We're going to start at verse number 12. Hallelujah. Jesus did it. He walked. He walked it. He walked it for 32 years or more. Amen. He did it. Hallelujah. So I'm here to let you guys know, hallelujah, we're his disciples. And if we're his disciple, he came and he trained those 12 disciples. Now he's training us. He's equipping us to let us know what we need to do. Amen. To walk this apostolic walk. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 12. Let us read. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. Stop right there. That's not what I want. Hold on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. I wrote down the wrong one. Hold on. I know it's in chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Let's start a little bit further down. Yeah, verse number 18. Amen? And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets, and they followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in the ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father, and they followed him. Amen? So we're followers of Jesus Christ. Am I right? Amen. 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 And so, therefore, Jesus chose his 12 disciples. He's, he just said, you know, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to choose me 12 disciples to follow me. And one thing about those disciples that, he, that when he did his cho choosing of them, they were just ordinary people, just like you and I. It wasn't anything special about them. Some were fishers. And so he was able to go out there and get them while they were out fishing, you know. And then there were some that were taxpayers, you know. There were some that were re revolutionists. There were different. There were different people, but they were people of all different kind. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So Jesus um, said that they were just like you and I. They were ordinary men who God used in an extraordinary way. Hallelujah. So the Bible records the constant falling, the struggles, the doubts of these 12 men as they follow Jesus. Yeah, they still encountered troubles. They still had things where things were weighing them down and, you know, and they were bogged down by other things. They, they had to do these things. So it's just like us in our day-to-day -day life. He went out and he said, okay, I'm going to choose me someone that works at a, a law firm. Firm. I'm going to choose somebody like that, okay? He says, okay, I'm going to choose me somebody that works at a school, you know? I'm going to choose somebody. I'm going to choose somebody, just a common person right off the street. I'm going to choose that person. Because that person, I, hey, I'm going to make an extraordinary person out of them. Amen? So it's nothing that we do. It's nothing of anything that we have done that God makes us that disciple to follow him. 
He knows. He knows what's in us. So he goes out and he chooses. He chooses his individuals to follow him. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they witnessed Jesus' resurrection and his ascension into heaven. And the Holy Spirit transformed these disciples into powerful men of God who turned this world upside down. Isn't that our pastor's vision? That's his vision. He wants people that are ready to help him turn this world upside down. Amen? Hallelujah. That means we got to have strong Holy Ghost inside of us. We got to be willing vessels to go out there and teach the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. That means we got to keep coming to church. Keep hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. We got to get equipped for what God has for us to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So the word disciple refers to a learner or a follower. And we've chosen to follow Jesus. And in being his follower, we got to be willing to learn. Just like a student, a kid goes to school, they go to learn, right? Right. They sit in that classroom and the teacher's going to teach them what they need to learn. All right? So they are There are learners. They're in that class to learn. So same thing when it comes to the word of God. We got to show up. We got to be right here so we can hear what God has to tell us. How can we follow him if we don't learn what he has to teach us? Amen. So we can't say, oh, I got a headache. I can't go to school today. No, that don't work. When we were growing up, our parents did not let us miss school. You woke up and you got a stomachache. All right, drink some of this. You going to school. You know, so same thing when it comes to coming to the house of God. I got to show up. I can't say I got a headache. I got a hangover. I can't have anything wrong. I just got to go and show up. If I show up, God's going to teach me what I need to know. He's going to show me what I need to do in order to make it where he's trying to get me to. Amen. So that's a disciple. The word apostle means one who is sent out. So now that we have learned the things that God has instructed us to do, now he's saying, okay, you guys are ready for apostleship. Go out there. Tell others about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But we got to still keep coming and keep hearing more because he's got a lot for us. Amen? Because we all going to run across different situations in our lives that we're going to have to go out and witness to someone. Just like yesterday, out here, we came across a variety of different people. Amen? And we got to know what to say to them. We got to be humble. We got to be able to show them some brotherly love. We got to show them, hey, we love in the house of God. We're not hating on anybody. Amen? And we all sisters and brothers in Christ. Hallelujah. We may play the dozen sometimes with one another, but that don't mean I don't love you. I love you. My own brothers and sisters at home, we play the dozen. But let somebody get in the way of my brother or my sister, I'm going to be there. Amen? So we got to remember, we got to show brotherly love to everyone, not just those that are right here in the house of God. We got to definitely show it to those that are on the outside because we're trying to win them. We're trying to tell them about this wonderful Jesus Christ that we serve. Amen. We're trying to let them know there's a place called heaven. There's a place that you don't have to worry anymore. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to cry. There's no more pain. Hallelujah. So we're out to to tell others. We got to show them that brotherly love. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So while Jesus was here, they referred, they were referred to as disciples because they were following him. They were learning what they needed to learn. Amen. And then after his ascension, they were referred to as apostles. Apostles. Amen. Let's look at Acts 1 and 8. Acts 1 and 8. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, and it reads, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and all the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen? So if you got the Holy Ghost, Nicole, you got power now. Amen? Hallelujah. You got the power now to go out and talk to individuals and tell them about the greatness of Jesus Christ. Amen. We got the power. That was one of, one of the things that the evangelists talked about this week. We got that power. We got that authority. Amen. Hallelujah. You got, because Jesus, you have come in and Jesus has shown you. He has learned you what you need to learn. Amen. Hallelujah. And he ain't finished with you. He got so much more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What kind of person does Christ call? What kind of person does Christ call? He calls each and every one of us that's here today. All he's looking for is somebody that's willing. Are you willing? Are you willing to show up? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The scripture shows that Christ called ordinary people who will simply, hallelujah, make themselves available to God. We got to make ourselves available, y'all. We got to stop coming up with excuses. We just got to make ourselves available. Hallelujah. We all know what days the church is open. We know when the services are. We got to make ourselves available. And not only just come into church, we got to make ourselves available by fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Because God talks to us in many different ways. Hallelujah. And we can't be available if we don't show forth ourselves ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if we go back and we just look at these disciples, the first disciples were not in a church when he came looking for them or even in a, a, a situation where they were studying. They weren't even studying the, God, the word of God. Hallelujah. They were neither in a position of authority or power. When he went and seen them, they was on a boat. They was fishing. So they weren't doing anything like they were over anything. They had no power at that time. Amen? They were just ordinary people. You see some guys fishing off the thing at the pier. You see guys just fishing. He just went up to them and just said, hey, follow me. Follow me. Thank you, Jesus. They were simply out just working and minding their own business. Minding their own business. Amen? Spiritual education is great, but the word of God is there to teach it. Hallelujah. It's our ammunition. That's what's going to help us make it in this world. That's what's going to help us put up with some of the things that are going on in the world. But we know that, hey, I'm about my father's business. I don't care that, you know, this is going on over there in the White House. Who cares? I'm trying to make it to heaven. Amen? Amen. All right. So positions and power, wealth, security, these things can keep a person away from God. You get too much position. I got to be at work. I got to be at work on Sunday. I'm missing church. I don't want to be at work on church on Sunday. You get too much power. You got the power to do this and power that goes to your head. And then you think that you're greater than God or even that you're equal to God. Amen. Nobody's equal to God. Wealth. People get money and they figure they can buy anything they want. You can't buy this Jesus. It can't be bought. Amen. You got to show up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So security. Some people are just so, you know, they secure in what they're doing. You know, these things can keep a person away from God. They make a person self-confident. You guys seen those kind of people? They just self-confident. You know, they don't think that, hey, nothing can move them. Nothing can, you know, get them from doing what they're, they're doing. Amen? We don't want to be like that. Because my confidence comes from Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And him crucified. 
And therefore, you know, if when you get like that, you become useless. God can't use you because you think everything is in yourself, and it's not. It's not within you. Amen. Man's own ability and energy blocks God's gift and power from flowing through him. Your own ability, if you're just thinking, you know, we do things sometimes. Sometimes we just say, hey, I don't feel like it today. You know, but it ain't about us. We got to remember, it's not about us. It's not about how we feel. It's about what God has called us to do. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that was the first set of disciples. Then we go on and we look at the second set. So God can use and call anyone who is really available. Are you really available? Are you really ready to make yourself available so that you can walk this apostolic walk? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Whether spiritually or not, learned or not learned, ordinary or extraordinary, The main ingredient here is being available, just simply being available, being ready ready to respond to God. If God says, I need you up at the church, I need you up at the church, amen? If pastor says, I need you guys praying, he needs us praying, amen? We don't have to say, well, what for, why, you know, what's, what's going on? No, I need you to pray. So we start praying, amen? So that was one trait that these disciples had when God said, follow me. When Jesus told them, follow me, they dropped what they were doing and they just went. They didn't question him. They didn't question him. So they just followed him. And that's the attitude we have to be. We just have to follow Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And same thing when we call our kids, it's like, you call your child. You say, Joseph, come here. You want him to answer. You don't want him to keep doing, playing the game or whatever he's doing. We want him to come. Right. And that's what God wants. He wants us to stop what we're doing and just follow him. Amen. Yeah. I stumped my feet that, that's now to remind me of that revivalist uh, evangelist Karen White. Every time she stumped her feet, my heart just was like, Lord, hallelujah. Every stump. Hallelujah. If you weren't here that night, you missed it. You missed it. Because <laughs> that stump was just still echoing in me. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. He can get the rocks to praise him if we don't want to praise him. You know, he's God. He can tell that chair over there to praise him if he won't. But he chose us, human beings, to praise him. He chose you to praise him. So why can't we praise him? Why can't we come to church and be his followers and do what he has called us to do? Amen. Hallelujah. The first apostles were brothers. That means they work together. We're brothers and sisters. That means we got to work together, you guys. Amen. They were called to follow Jesus at once, immediately. They were immediately called to do another job. They had another job. Boom, just that quick, but before them. Amen? And they were responsive. They went ahead, and as soon as he said, follow me, okay. They didn't give him any lip, any side talk, anything. The second men that were called, they were obedient sons working for their father. Closely. Closely. So, you know, if... You got a business and you got your kids working for you. That tells you something. That means that's a close family, right? That's a close family. They're doing things together. They're all on one accord. Hallelujah. You know, so that's the kind of, that's the kind of disciple God wants. He wants us to be closely knit. He wants us to show that brotherly love amongst us. He wants us to be on that one accord. Hallelujah. He wants us to do these things. Amen. Hallelujah. They were simply just called. We're all just called. We were called to this place. This day, this hour, we were called here. Amen. Summons. Hallelujah. They were responsive. They left their life. And that's what we have to do, you guys. We got to leave our life. When we got that call, and we just, and God came and told us, hey, I need you. I I got a job for you to do. You had to drop whatever you were doing. 
We had to change our schedule on Sundays. Those of us that was at, used to being at home watching the game, we couldn't be at the game anymore. We had to be here. Amen? So, and through the years, we've learned that, hey, I mean, in the beginning, we probably were taping those games. So we get home, we could watch the game. But after a while, you got to the point, who cares? I see the highlights, you know, or whatever. You know, you just got to that point because you matured now since you've been over here. And those things are just not important anymore to you. Amen. Amen. The important thing is getting here to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the disciples' brotherly spirit showed. And the need for brotherly spirit and the kindness of the spirit of Christ desires for his followers. The kingdom, the king and the kingdom of Christ is building in that brotherly love. So God is building us in that brotherly love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to Matthew 22 and 39. Matthew 22. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So in the midst of the brotherly love, we get verse number 20, excuse me, 39 in chapter 22. And it says, and the second is like unto this. Thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. He has told us not only do we have to have brotherly love, we got to love our neighbors. That neighbor that you never talked to. You come out and you just say hi. You got to learn to love them. That neighbor that played that loud music, you got to learn to love that neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That neighbor that's over there that's got that junky yard and never water their grass. And you like, man, they making us look bad. <laughs> you got to love that neighbor. You got to love them. So that brotherly love now extends out of these walls. (laughs) It's extended. We got to love our neighbors. Amen. By this shall all men know that know that ye are my disciples. Ye have love one to another. So when we were out there witnessing yesterday doing our four corners, a lot of the people that came up, they said, You know, just watching you guys, I can see the love among you guys. They can see. They can see that everybody was in harmony all together. Hallelujah. And that made them want to come over here and see what's what's going on. You know, they see us out there all the time. One of the ladies says she lives here in the neighborhood. She sees us outside all the time. She says they're doing something wonderful. You know, she's like, they're like family. They all gather together. They have the kids and everything. Because they see that. They see that we're, we love one another. That we're about God's business. Yeah. Amen. So people are watching. Yeah. Even when you don't think that they're watching, they're watching. Yeah. So we got to pay attention. Hallelujah. And keep letting the love of God shine through us. Yeah. Keep suppressing us. Yeah. Keep pushing down that attitude or whatever it is that tries to overcome you. Keep pushing that down and let the love of God shine through. Amen? Hallelujah. Even when you don't feel like it, let the love of God shine through. Amen? Romans 12.10 says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honoring, preferring one another. They were simply called, these disciples. They were nothing dramatic or spectacular about them again. Hallelujah. God's calls involves a drastic change. He's doing a change in each and every one of us. And you should be able to see the change in your life. Don't fight it. Amen. God is changing us. A change of life and a change in one's primary profession. We once were out there, alcoholics, smokers, drug addicts, whatever it was. We were out there, whoremongers. We were out there. But God has changed our lives. We're no longer called such names. Amen? Hallelujah. Because we've come in here and we've found that 
God can change us and turn it all around. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all of that stuff. We left it all. We left all of that. And we followed thee, Lord. We've come, and now we're following Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So success be- begins with following in Jesus' footsteps. If we keep following in Jesus' footsteps, you guys, hallelujah, we're going to make it to that place called heaven. We're going to make it. But we got to keep following in Jesus' footsteps. Hallelujah. Once you commit to it, you must be responsible and faithful to him. And we've made that commitment. Hallelujah. You came up here and you went down in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. You made a commitment. Lord, I don't want to be like this anymore. Lord, I want to change my life. Amen. And you came up here and you tarried. Hallelujah. And you said hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. You sweat it. Hallelujah. Until Jesus filled you with his precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You did all of that. You didn't do that in vain. You didn't do that for nothing. Hallelujah. Let God work that good work in you. Hallelujah. Let God make you the saint that he is called to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We've talked about this week about our assignments and how we must follow our assignments. Hallelujah. We have to refuse. Say that I dare not be sidetracked. I'm not going to be sidetracked by the secondary matters of the world. Hallelujah. Which might cause you to change your course or disrupt you from what you're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Follow your assignment. Hallelujah. Follow your assignment that God has given you to do. Thank you, Jesus. And one of the speakers spoke about stepping into your assignment. (laughs) Stepping into your assignment. We now know what we were called to do. We now know what our assignment is. Amen? And so we've been summoned. We've been summoned. We've been called here to represent Jesus Christ. And he's looking for ordinary people. Ordinary people that he's going to make extraordinary people. Hallelujah. So nothing that you have done is too bad. Nothing that you have done is just the worst of the worst. God says, I can change you. He says, I can turn your life around. I can make you a follower of me. Hallelujah of him, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I can show you how to be on my team so that we can turn this world upside down. Amen. Hallelujah. But all he's asking is that you show up. Show up. Come to church. Show up. And when you show up, be ready. Lord, I'm available. Not only am I showing up, I'm not going to be all tight knit. Okay, I don't want to hear what he got to say. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. No, I'm going to relax. And I'm going to take in the word of God. Because I want to hear what God has to say for me. I want God to tell me, what do you have for me to do today, Lord? Hallelujah. Because when I go out there outside those doors, I want to represent Jesus Christ. I want to make him proud that he chose me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And they also reiterated, speak it. Call on God. If you see you having a bad day, call on him. He's there. He's everywhere. We got a wonderful God that's everywhere we go. Amen. And all we got to do is call on him. Lord, these people are just, I can't take it. Lord, I need you. Lord, help me. That's what he's there for, to help you. Why would he bring you this far to leave you? Why would he bring you this far to see you fall by the wayside? Amen. He didn't bring you this far to just let you fall to pieces. 
He brought you here because he knew that something great is in you. Amen. He knew that he could make you his disciple, his apostle to go out there and preach and let others know how wonderful he is. That you could go out there and win somebody and bring them in to Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's all he's asking us to do. Go out there and tell people about him. Go out there and bring them to the church. That's all you got to do. If you can get them here, God going to do the rest. He going to do the word, the rest. The word of God is going to do the rest. We just got to bring them in. We just got to let them know, hey. And we just got to live the life that we speak of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another night we talked about restoration. God is cleaning us up. Don't go back. Hallelujah. To that dead state being unproductive. Hallelujah. We have a job to do, you guys. We're apostolic. We're apostolic. Apostolic is being called to a higher calling. Amen. We're not a Christian. The word Christian has become so cliche-ish. People out there say they're Christians, but then they go out and they still drink. Or they go out and still commit fornication. Amen. We're a saint. Saints called by Jesus Christ. Amen. We are saints of God. We are called to a higher calling. Amen. Just as we expect our kids to go to school and get a good education, don't bring me no C's and D's in here. Hallelujah. God is saying the same thing. Don't come in here and not do what I have commanded you to do. I need you guys to do what I have commanded you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. You are called to a higher calling. A higher calling. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's mount up. Let's go to work. Let's make Jesus proud of us. Amen. Hallelujah. We're held to a different standard of living called by God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And if we look at You know, in the world, there's different positions out there in the world that that have, like, a prestigious, like, calling to them. You know, when you tell somebody that you are, say, for instance, a firefighter, you know, firefighters are kind of looked up to and admired because a firefighter's job is very important. It's all about helping somebody else. It ain't about themselves. Their job is called to... Help someone else. Amen. So that's a prestigious call. Hallelujah. And so that's the way we have to look at this walk. It's prestigious. We have a higher calling. Hallelujah. And those firefighters, they're there to serve, to help people. Hallelujah. Can a firefighter go to a fire and decide, okay, I'm not going to go in there. I'm going to let that lady burn up. He can't do that. Amen. So we can't do that, y'all. We can't let Jesus down. He has called you here. He has brought you here because he knows you can do it. You can do this. Amen. If you keep your mind on him, you can do it. You can't do it thinking, Lord, I I, I just can't do this. You know, a lot of times I get very nervous, super nervous, when I know I got to come before the saints of God. We get nervous. and like, Lord, I just can't do this. I told Pastor, you know what? He was saying something at home, and he was like, the Mother's Day thing. That's what he was like. It's Mother's Day because, see, in my family, the men cook. The women sit down on Mother's Day. We get our bells. Ding, ding, ding. Could I have some water? Ding, ding, ding. Could I have a spoon? You know, we wear this day out. And he was like, do I have to do this day? (laughs) Can I get out of this day? And I was like, no. (laughs) No. You can't get out of this day. I said, but you can preach today. (laughs) Amen. So, you know, I said that to say that, you know, there's some things that we just don't feel up to sometimes. You know, there's some things, yeah, that we just get so nervous and we, we get so nervous that we get scared and back away and go to, you know, do a 360 and go back the other way. But we can't be like that. If you come in here, the word of God says when you weep, that's when he's strong. 
So when you weep, you need to run to the house of God. Hallelujah. So you can get some strength. Hallelujah. You need to fall on your knees and just start talking to God. Lord Jesus, I just don't think I can do this. And he's going to strengthen you. He's going to give you what you need. Because he didn't call you to fail. He called you to a greatness. Hallelujah. He called you. Amen. Hallelujah. Our assignment is helping people. We are disciples of God. We're getting the training, and now it's time to go out and tell others as apostles of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. He's coming back for people ready, ready with their oil burning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. Pray for those that are sick. Send them to the house of God for deliverance. That's what we got to do, you guys. We got to pray for people. Amen. It's a lot of things going on in the world. Hallelujah. It's a lot. We got to pray. We got to pray. Yeah. One of the things they said, we got to go back to the old way. And you guys know back in the days, our mothers, our grandmothers, we weren't saved. But we knew they was on their knees and they was praying. They was doing something. And we're like, man, why is she always praying all the time? But now it's your turn. They have passed the torch to us. It's time for us to pray. We didn't have kids. We got to pray for our kids. Amen? Amen? We got to keep our kids constantly in prayer. You know, so now that it's our turn, we got to stay constantly in prayer, constantly before Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to let them know and we got to know ourselves that everything can be found in the house of God. Everything, no matter what you need, no matter what you're going through, everything can be found right here in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is God abiding on the inside of you? Are you allowing God to take control? Hallelujah. Don't be caught without your oil. Be caught doing just what you're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Nobody wants to be caught with, with their hand in a cookie jar or whatever they used to say. <laughs> Nobody wants to be caught doing something they ain't supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. So when Jesus comes back, we want to be caught doing what we're supposed to be doing. Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus came back and you was down here on your knees praying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like, Lord, I was just praying to you. I was just telling you. You know, huh? It would be such wonderful to be caught doing exactly what he has called us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Be about your father's business. Hallelujah. Know that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. All things, no matter how small it is, no matter how large it is, hallelujah, you can make it. You can get through this, hallelujah, hallelujah, because the word of God says this too shall pass. It's going to go. Everything's going to pass away, amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because Jesus cared so much, he's sending us reminders. Every time. You go down in prayer. Every time you open your Bible. Every time you come before him in some form or fashion, hallelujah, he's reminding you. You know, in the, the new world, we call it, he's sending you an email. <laughs> he's text messaging you. <laughs> but he's letting you know, hey, pay attention. Hey, you need to be about my business. Hey. I need you. Hey, learn what I got for you to learn because I got something down the road for you. Amen? So he's going to give us those pop-ups. He's going to give us some jolts every now and then because he wants to make sure you're stable. He wants to make sure when things come your way, you don't fall. He wants you to stand still on the word of God. He wants you to stand strong and be able to take it. Be able to let it just hit you and keep going. He wants you to be able to, hey, withstand it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So listen, pay attention to those pop-ups. Pay attention to those emails you get from Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because all he's doing is keeping us, our mind on him. All he's doing is keeping us on the right pathway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's preparing a place for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, in my mansion, there are many rooms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we got to be ready. We got to be ready. So I ask you guys again, are you ready for this apostolic walk? If you're ready for this apostolic walk, stand up. Stand up. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're ready for this apostolic walk, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. And praise your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say I'm ready, Jesus. I'm ready, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Are you ready for this apostolic walk? Hallelujah. All of y'all that, I think just about all of y'all, when, when y'all said y'all was ready to be members of the church, what was, what was the first question I asked you? What did I say? Oh, hold on. What did I say, Mother Donna? Are you ready for me to tell you what to do? That's what being a member means. That means you're ready for me to tell you what to do. That's, that's what her message is saying. God said, y'all ready to be an apostolic? God said, that means y'all ready for him to tell y'all what to do. Oh, y'all didn't see y'all missed that. What did he say? He told the disciples that were doing, wait a minute, working for their daddy. How many of y'all walk away? You're, you're working with your daddy and you said, Dad, I gotta go. Right. Dad said, Boy, you lost your mind. They didn't say nothing. The daddy didn't say nothing. He just they dropped. Wait a minute. They was in the midst of getting fish out the water, out the boat, and they dropped their nets and walked away. That means I'm ready to be told what to do by another person. Listen, so are you ready? See, that's the biggest obstacle with folks coming to this apostolic doctrine. They say, I don't think it take all of that. I don't want no man controlling me. That's why you're on your way to hell. Because you don't want no man controlling. That's what it's all about. So are you ready to take this walk? They asked Jesus on one occasion. He said, can I have what you have? He said, are you able to bear the burden that I bear? Can you wear the load that you need to wear to get what I'm going to get? Listen, we're not going to get heaven just because we just showed up. We're going to get heaven because we gave up the world. We gave up our own life also. Amen. So the question is, are you ready for this apostolic doctrine? Listen, oh, but here's the best part about it all. Here's the best part. Here's the best part. If you let Jesus control you, you don't have to think no more. Because he said, take no thought. You ain't got to think no more. He said, if you're going to give me your life, don't worry about it. You ain't got to think no more. I got it. So let me, I'm going to give you thoughts. I'm going to give you, I'm going to guide you. I'm going to tell you what to do. All I want you to do, all I want you to do is just acknowledge me in all your ways and I'll direct your path. Now that's a piece of cake, ain't it? But see, we want to come to Christ and direct our own path. But I ain't got time to listen to Jesus. Jesus ain't never told me to listen to no man. You, I thought, show the scripture, obey those who have rule over you, for they watch out for your soul. That, it may, that, <coughs> that they may give an account for your soul, and it don't be grievous for you. Which means, I get to walk up there and tell God what you did or didn't do. And you don't want me to walk up there and scratch my head. You don't want that. Because that means it's grievous. you in danger. Oh, hallelujah. What, 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 what the message, what the evangelist, what she's telling us, y'all, are you really ready for this kind of doctrine? Because it is controlling. It's very controlling. You don't get to think no more over here. You don't, you don't, you don't get to do that. And, and y'all know me as a pastor. I stay in your business. You may get tired of me. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you fuss a little bit. Then I'm going to come right back and get in it again. That's my job. Because if I don't stay in your, I had, what Elder Whitfield taught y'all that. Because if I don't stay in y'all business, I'm not doing my job. 
I'm responsible for y'all. I have to make sure that you do things right. I can't make you. But here's the wonderful thing about Jesus. He doesn't make you either. You make, your, you make the call. He tells you. I asked somebody recently, do you trust me? Do you trust me? I know they didn't know what I meant. Trust me means I'm going to tell you what to do from now on. But see, all of y'all that became member, what I asked you, are you really want to be a member? Yeah. I said, that means you ready for me to tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> you was ready at that moment. Six months later, I don't know. <laughs> pastor always telling me what to do. Now, Pastor ain't telling you that. Jesus is telling you what to do. I just happen to be the spokesperson. Amen. Because Jesus ain't going to come down here and tell y'all one time. He told you to come to church over in Isaiah. He ain't going to come verbalize it one time. That's my job. Amen. 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 All right. Come on. Let's get it, Lord. Hand praise. Hallelujah. We've had a wonderful week. We've had a wonderful week. Amen. I, I was sitting there and I said, I paid the other evangelist, so let's pay this one. Amen. So let's get an offering, and we're going to give an offering to Sister Portis as our evangelist. Amen. Amen. That means reaching your pockets, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Amen. So let's take an offering real quick. Come on, let's do this real quick. Amen. And the brothers have something that they want to do for the, the, the sisters of the church. So let's bear, it's hanging there a little bit longer. We don't have night service, so y'all don't have to worry about rushing back. Amen. But I do want to take an offering for our speaker. You don't have to walk. Sister Sheila is going to come around. Get the other. We can do both sides. We can do it fast. Now, now I, I, I got, I got. I got one hundred dollar bill, one one hundred dollar bill left, and when the when the, when the speaker got through speaking on Friday, I had did her offering, and the Holy Ghost said, "Give her another hundred. So I had to pull another hundred out. So the Lord is telling me to pull another hundred out, and I ain't got no more to pull out. So, Amen. Uh -oh. Elder Whitfield gonna match mine. Amen. I'm not asking nobody to do it. I'm just telling you what God told me. And, and y'all don't have to, I do not take my wife money no more. Notice I said no more. Because I make enough money now to support the house. I don't, I don't have nothing to do with her money when we give it to her. Amen. So I just want y'all to understand, well, Pastor, you're going to take it back. No, I don't. I don't take it back. Amen. I don't even feel comfortable asking her for, I don't, I don't really like my wife buying me nothing. I feel uncomfortable now. Amen. Because I don't have to. Because God have trained me. It's my job to take care of her. It's not her job to take care of me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who's over? Uh, Brother Courtney, you the one sent me the message. So I guess you coming up. He's in the back. Is he the one coming up to do James? Where did Elder Whitfield go? Did we have a wonderful time this week, though? Man, we had church every night. We witnessed yesterday, and we come back today, and somebody got the Holy Ghost, get baptized. I mean, that's, that's, that's fun. That, that's what you call having a party. Amen. You ain't got to count it. Just give it to them. Amen. Just fold it up, put it in an envelope or something, or put it in a hand. Amen. Uh, In other words, they don't want us to know, Cologne, so just, just, just drop it in there. Ball it up. No, no, ball it up. If that's what they want, I'm telling you. Now. Now, I've been married to my wife 22 years. I know Sister Portis. I didn't make 22 years by not knowing her. Because she know we can count fast and good. John. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Whitfield. Do you know what they're doing? You can't have my mic. You gotta get, 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 get.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Just want to say on behalf of the Brotherhood, amen, the Brotherhood Department, we just want to do something for our sisters and say happy Mother's Day to our saved sisters, amen. Y'all do a lot of hard work. As brothers, we appreciate it, amen. And we, you know, sometimes I was explaining to somebody, we just want to treat y'all like queens, amen. amen. It's not the fact that we want to try to put y'all down. No, we want y'all to be queens and just look good. Amen? Amen. Amen. So they're going to pass out a few things. Come on, brothers. And we're going to pass out to the, for the sisters. Amen. Amen. Did all the sisters get one? <laughs> oh, Donella got the, 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 the mother's got three roses. Amen. See, see, Mama Brina on the cuffs. We got to give her, we got to give her two more. Amen. Man, you dropping... Amen, amen. Amen. We got all See, sister, sisters. Sister Sabrina going to be 60 this year, y'all. So she going So she going to be So we going to have to we going to have to we going to have to change her from Sister Sabrina to 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 Mama Sabrina. Amen. Amen. I know she's not ready for it, but that listen, that's a wonderful title. Huh? Oh, you ready for it? Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> we can start calling you that today. So starting today, she's who? Mama Brina. Right. Now, she says she's ready for it. Let's, let's give it to her. Amen. So support is coming up. Amen. Uh, uh, why don't y'all do this? Give all of the all of the girls one, even though they ain't mama. Make them feel special. Amen. Kennedy and, and huh? Come on, give them all one. Y'all seem like y'all got a lot of them.
Oh. Oh, one one announcement. One announcement. Uh, Mother Brina, Mother Sabrina. I've been calling her Brina so long, it's kind of hard to say Sabrina. Mother Sabrina is having a birthday party June, June 3rd, and we're all invited. But here's it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's the good part. She's having a birthday party where she wants us to come out, and, and basically we're coming out to witness Amen. So it's going to be a lot of uh, testimonies and the choir is going to be singing. It's her birthday, but she want them. She've already reserved a park and, sh and uh, she reserved the date and a praise party. That's what you're calling it. She's having a praise party. So y'all put that on your calendar. We're going to have some fun praising Jesus in the park. Can I say, listen, y'all, that's something to get excited about. Listen, we are, we are about winning souls. Amen. The Bible said we got to be as wise as a serpent. Now, we call that in the world, we got to be slick. But we ain't going to sin in the process. Amen. We're going to have a party. And listen, she didn't, she's inviting all of her friends, family, co-workers. Listen, they're not saved. And then all of us going to show up saved. Are we, are, we, are we wearing t-shirts? Okay, she said, don't wear the t-shirts. So we're going to be, what's that word, inconspicuous? <laughs> Amen. But well, we're going to be there to tell folks. About, all we're going to be doing is telling folks about Jesus. Amen. And, and M Mother Donna came up with a good idea yesterday. Oh, were you through? Jane, were you through? Oh, I'm sorry. You were? Okay. Uh, Mother Donna came before we dismissed. We're going to have some cards next week for you all. The, the, the business witnessing cards. This is Mother Donna's idea. Okay. She said, she said, she said, she said that way if it don't fail, if it doesn't work, the pastor won't get blamed. So this is Mother Donna's idea. No, it's, it's, we're going to do business cards where we're going to put on one side, we're going to put about texting Jesus. And y'all really got to promote this text Jesus at 55,000. Because we need, see, the, the key behind that, you get people to text Jesus, I get their sale number. And then we can invite them to all of our church services. They can opt out at any time. So y'all really got to push text Jesus at 55,000. And then, uh, uh, what do you say, a heavenly word, and they get a response back. Now, everybody that I've got to do that, they say, oh, man, that's cool. I like that. And then they say, I text that all the time now. Because when they're down, they're sad, they need encouragement, and they text Jesus, a response come back. And they, they always say, he knew exactly what to say. Amen. Do y'all know on that, on that system, it's, it's 100 messages, right? And they're all scripture. But Jesus knows which one to send everybody when they need it. Amen. It's not in no numerical order. It's just haphazard. One just gold. Listen, so Jesus gave us the idea so Jesus knows which one to send. Amen. On the other side, we're, we're advertising the app. Encourage people to download the app. Since people, it's, it's amazing. I'm going to talk a little bit more. I'm going to let us go. It's amazing human nature. Now, we've had the website. Long time. I haven't had no, no, no prayer requests. Nobody donating money. But since the app came, you know, people are donating money and people are sending in prayer requests. It's amazing what technology, a little app, a little app, and then all it does, and all of a sudden it's promoting, provoking people to give and, and to ask for prayer, all because of a little click on their phone. Amen. So the devil may have meant it for evil, but look what God doing with it. So the devil always got something going on, but God know how to make it for our good. So y'all encourage people to download the app. It's, it really is making a difference at the church and, and people that want to know about Jesus. Amen? All right, let us stand. Let us stand. We're going to let Mama Sabrina, she's going to come and dismiss us. Amen? If she didn't, if she didn't have so many jobs, I'd put her over the seniors, but, but I know she already got a lot of jobs. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everyone bow your heads. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your kindness, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the encouraging words that you've given us on this week, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord God, for all that you continue to do, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for just being who you are, Lord Jesus, for calling us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us a mind to want to serve you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for waking us up in our right mind, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you just continue, Lord God, continue just to work on our hearts, Lord. Continue to correct us, Lord Jesus. Continue, Lord God, to just be there for us, Lord Jesus. Lord God, now we thank you for for everything. We can't thank you enough, Lord God. And we just ask that you bring us back at the next appointed time, that you bless everyone on today, Lord Jesus, that they have a great day, Lord God. Bless every mother in the house. Continue to strengthen them, Lord Jesus, for the tasks that they have ahead, Lord God. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Jesus.